too. Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. How is everybody doing this week? We have a great guest tonight. He's like sitting right next to me, Jeff Howell. Hello, hello. The Dean of VoiceOver Coaches here in Hollywood. Works with everybody. Some really amazing people. Thank you. And Thank you. we're going to talk about mostly about dubbing mm -hmm. and some of the other things. So if you've got questions for him, throw it in the chat room. Uh, Jeff Holman, who is actually sitting here in the studio with He's us here. today. He's here. Uh, we'll be uh, monitoring the chat room. If you've got a question, throw it in there, and we will get those questions uh, in just a little while. So are you ready, Mr. Whittem? Ready to go. It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop right now. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Hey, how you doing out there? I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. How's everybody going out there? What's going on in the voiceover world? We're happy to have you with us. Again, if you've got a question for our guest or for George and I when we talk Tech Talk a little bit later on, send it in the chat room and Jeff Holman will take care of that and make sure that we get that question right here, somewhat within view of my, my aging eyes here. Anyway, our guest tonight is the fabulous Jeff Howell, one of the best known coaches here in L.A., you teach everything. I do. <laughs> <laughs> from from what I'm seeing, of course. Every now, one, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, the the uh, I, there was some confusion on your resume when I was like, okay, well, let's get everything right here on for yes. our promos for the show. Yes. But uh, where are you now, and what are you doing? So I am working for myself. I have my own company, Howell Productions Inc., and I went out on my own eight years ago. And since then, I basically will pretty much produce, direct anything that comes my way. And through this journey over these last eight years, I've ended up immersing myself in the dubbing world quite a bit. But yet I still dabble in commercial and promo and narration, uh, a little bit of animation as well. Uh, and I basically, whenever anyone's asked me about uh, what types of projects I enjoy doing, I just say I enjoy doing all of it. And, and also, as you just mentioned, I coach as well. And occasionally we'll do a demo if I have time. So anyway, but I just, I love what I do. I love every part of this business and especially as of late, the dubbing business, which is, has its challenges, which I can go into, but it is, uh, it's an exciting, uh, new, newer part of our business. Yeah. Now during the pandemic, mm -hmm. of course, dubbing became real big time because Nothing could be produced here in LA exactly, or in exactly. other places. Yep. And, but there was a lot of material mm -hmm. in Europe mm -hmm. and Turkey and some of these other mm -hmm. places. It had to be dubbed. And I noticed that it's a lot tighter than it used to be. Yes. You exactly. know, it's no longer someone talking yep. and their mouth keeps moving, you know, something mm -hmm. along those mm -hmm. lines. Mm -hmm. What were some of the technological changes? Well, I think that, um, you know, what we noticed it during the pandemic was that, you know, the technology, when it worked, it was fantastic. But as we found, everyone has a different sounding booth. And with dubbing, uh, just like ADR, you have to sound like you're in the mixers have to mix it so that it sounds like everyone's in the same room. And that's a real challenge. And I, I really, my, I tip my hats off to the mixers because they really had a big job during that time to make all the rooms sound essentially the same. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's where George, certainly you can step in on this too, because of the acoustics of everyone's, you know, you could say, have a closet, get a good microphone, call it a day. But, you know, we had, I can't even tell you, it was almost comedic when we'd see the camera <laughs> of the closets and what they were doing to make it sound soundproof or to keep yeah. the dynamics and the acoustics so that it sounded good. 
and it was it was a crazy crazy time uh, but we we got around that and we also found too that you know with with dubbing the sync is an issue and for us to be able to judge whether or not your performance is syncing up properly we need to be able to look at it at that time and even though you would record and we would have the engineer line it up and then i would have to judge really quickly if i like the performance if we captured it and also if the sync worked but oftentimes, sometimes the sync was about 10 seconds off in terms of when we were recording. And that made it a little daunting to judge the performance as we were going along. So what we found was it took more time. Mm -hmm. And as we all, yeah. as some, I don't know if you know or not, but dubbing, a lot of it is based on time in terms of how you're paid. So it cost a lot more money uh, talent-wise during that time period to capture uh, the voices. And also, oh, wow. as we all know, uh, little clicks and things happen when you're when you're dubbing, uh, when you're using something off Wi-Fi or hopefully not Wi-Fi, but when we were doing remotes. And so uh, we'd have to cover everything twice at least, even if I liked the take and it sounded great, we do a safety because sometimes we don't hear those little imperfections until after you've disconnected. And so it just took a lot more time. And uh, that those were, I think I answered your question, the technological yeah. changes. I mean, we're still able to do it, of course. It's just it, it costs more money because it costs more time. It takes more time. Mm. Right. Mm. Well, there, there was this, the development of, of karaoke style right. with, with dubbing. I mean, mm -hmm. it used to be, you know, I watch the film, you're beep, beep. Yeah, the three pop. And, yeah. yeah, and then right. you'd, you'd exactly. watch it. Yeah. And then they came up with karaoke where mm -hmm. it just comes across right in sync with the actor. Right, which exactly. Which probably takes a lot of effort on the other end mm -hmm. in preparing them. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that, that's, that made it a lot easier. And, yeah. And I've done a couple of projects in various places all over the mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always fun getting up at 6.30 in the morning <laughs> to do something at 8.30 at night in Mumbai. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, so it's like, okay, I'm awake. I can do this, you know, and then somebody, okay, now you're going to do it. List one. Uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was, it's always fun doing yeah. it. And it's always great working with people in other places, mm -hmm. but it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, people don't realize that it's acting. You've got to watch what's mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. and imitate that particular action and emotion of the character. Mm -hmm. I actually mean, to think of something. Did you notice? Any kind of a shift in the performances overall? Just, was there anything that changed in the way people performed because they were forced to work from home, or did, was was it harder to get the performances too? Not That's only a, was the technical you know, time, but the actual. Mm -hmm. Now let's do that again. Let's get a little bit more. Was that an issue? It's a good question, and I think for the most part, if I, how I, what I found was if the actor had experience dubbing already, they yeah. were fine. Yeah, yeah, but. As we have found in the dubbing world, we end up using new people all the time because we have specific needs for a specific show yep. or film. And so oftentimes we'll end up casting new people, which I, and I love that. I love working with new people. And may, may, maybe we cast them because it was a great voice match or they had a specific skill of being bilingual in a certain language that we were dubbing and we needed two languages as opposed to just English. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes we would find ourselves working with someone who may not have that much dubbing experience. So the, the process of acting in uh, that dubbing realm was more of a challenge for them, especially being remote as opposed to being in the studio with us. So to answer your question, yes, we did find that to be somewhat significant that that difference if they didn't have the experience but even if I'm, i don't mean i need to push the subject mm. if, if they were in <laughs> the studio and still had that inexperience do you think that was just sort of magnified because yes. they weren't in the studio absolutely because yeah. for the most part when you get someone new you know I, I my job as a director various jobs actually various hats but one of them is to be sort of the ambassador and the host of the session and to make them feel as comfortable as possible and and to walk them through the dubbing process and just like you said dan the the scrolling across the screen i oftentimes try to say if you've ever done karaoke then you definitely should be able to you know grab this okay but it is odd if you've never had experience doing it and you're in a dark room as a small studio booth and you're looking at a big screen and all of a sudden you see these things fly right. by and and symbols that mean certain breaths and and whether open mouth closed mouth or there may be an asterisk which means it's a mouth flap or a clap or <laughs> something like that so it's just trying to get them used to that particular language so that sure. when they're when they are watching it they're in that process in that booth in giving us that performance that becomes more natural because they're thinking less about the technique of it. And now they're really able to just embrace the acting. So, yeah. And, and let's talk about the acting. I mm -hmm. mean, how do you, I mean, and you're coaching people on doing this, you're directing mm -hmm. them, but you're also teaching this. What, mm -hmm. how, what exactly do you have to teach people in order to, to get this done right? 
I think that the what I've noticed is that, you know, in terms of the acting, first of all, a lot of it is rhythm. If you have an ear for rhythm, I found that musicians are really good at dubbing because they have a sense of, of rhythm. And because they're they're as they're viewing back and listening, as we're all sitting there viewing the material, looking at the scroll going across, studying the scene, thinking about the tone, the emotion, uh, they're also listening to the rhythm. And that's so important because that's how we're lining up the word so that the cadence is accurate enough so that it isn't as jarring when you're watching the labials, the lip flaps. And so anyway, but in terms of answering your question about the acting, it's all about the the thing about the emotional uh, sort of intent of the scene, uh, how we express or how that actor expressed the emotion and in, in vocally and trying to match that as closely as possible. And also thinking about the other things, the the physical movement going on. Uh, whether it's a breath when they're, uh, you know, if they're getting excited and they're starting to increase their, their breath because their adrenaline, the original actor, their adrenaline was flowing. And so they were getting excited. So we want that to match that as closely as possible. So when you're an actor in dubbing, you're thinking about a lot of different things and not just how you sound, but what's going on in the scene emotionally, physically, as well as vocally. So. So there's a lot to it, you know, yeah. and, and a lot to think about because you're having to wear a couple of hats. You're trying to do the specific skill of watching the scroll and being precise with hitting the words where they're supposed to hit when it hits the cue line. But in addition to that, you've got to wear that creative hat where you're being emotional and you're in the scene and you're thinking about what's my arc? What, what am I trying to achieve in this scene? How am I reacting? And so it's wearing all these different hats and thinking about just making sure that you're hitting the marks. And so it's definitely a... Uh, a definite uh, challenge, yeah, uh, I, which I love. Yeah. I, f I found it very challenging mm -hmm. in the times that I've done it. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, again, capturing the emotion of somebody. And then, you know, I mean, you listen to the scene mm -hmm. and they're talking whatever language they're talking in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes their emotional, you know, the way they express it might be different than how we do it. Right. And that's, you know, how do you make it sound like English? Or mm -hmm. how do you make it mm -hmm. sound like it's, it's that? And it, they may go on for a little bit, and they're mm -hmm. like, okay, you missed that mouth flap there, and mm -hmm. you, all right, let's go back, all right, and do that. And then, of course, they go in, and they're like, okay, now we can do this. And you, right. can, and you, you can see them doing it, mm -hmm. or at least tell that they're doing it, and then they're like, okay, come back. And that, that of course, is what takes up the time. Did, they, did you get um, like a rehearsal offline or like a, here's what's going to happen, mm -hmm. here's the process before the actual stepping into the studio? or No. You just <laughs> yeah. go. I, it's it's get cold. No prep. It's yeah. cold. No prep. It's cold. Eh? Well, well, it's I mean, cold, but yet we let prep them for the technical side. Well, right? here's yeah. what it's going to look like. This is yeah. what you're going to. do. Oh yeah, no, yeah. no. They 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 help you set it up here. So, you know, because some okay, different gotcha. different companies oh, yeah. use different different platforms. Right. Sure. Exactly. Gotcha. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Because yeah. you're right. And yeah. sometimes the producers will call the day before and make sure you sound it sounds okay. Sure. And make sure you've got a handle on all the technology so that when yeah. we're actually on the clock. You're off to the races, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Once again, our guest is Jeff Holman. He knows all this stuff about dubbing, which is big time business right now. He's over there, though. Yeah, that's, he's oh, Jeff Holman. Oh, oh, that's, that's Jeff Holman. That, 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 <laughs> that was guaranteed to happen. I knew it was going to happen. I did and, the same and, thing and with, it wasn't with you, PJ it was going to be me. <laughs> so Oakland, lastly. See, I just do that. Now that you did it, okay. I don't have to do it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Our guest is Jeff Howell. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Holman's here, but Jeff Howell is here. I'm here. Good luck. That's right. And, <laughs> and if you've got a question for him about dubbing and other things in the voiceover business, of which he knows absolutely everything, uh, just put it in the chat room, and we'll mm -hmm. get to that question in just a little bit. Uh, well, now, now that it can be done remotely, mm -hmm. and you know people can come into the studio, but it can be done remotely, and during the pandemic, certainly it was being done mm -hmm. remotely. Did you find a lot of people who were perhaps out of work actors? They were like, "Oh, I can do dubbing." Mm -hmm. Was there a lot of that? And people, you, a, a huge influx of people saying, "Okay, I can do this for now." Well, yes, yeah, certainly. I think that as the word has gotten out about dubbing, I think there's been uh, certainly a, a sort of interest universally uh, from various communities across the United States and internationally to get involved with dubbing, you know, right. it's another revenue stream for the actors and, and certainly it's interesting work. Uh, it's not necessarily the highest paying part of our business, certainly, but I know that for the most part, 99% uh, of the actors that I've had in or have connected with remotely have said they've really enjoyed the process and that it's helped them grow as a voice actor, uh, certainly because they are uh, more in touch with their emotions and, and all that in terms of how they sound emotionally in a certain scene, that sort of thing. 
Um, and they just love the work. I mean, who doesn't like the work? And especially if it's union, you at least get some contributions to your pension and health and, mm. and that sort of thing. And there's a, I think there's more right now, my sense of it is there's more union than non-union out there in terms of dying. Now, that wasn't the way it started. You know, eight years ago when I first started doing this, Netflix had not negotiated the contract with SAG yet. So it was more non-union than union. But that has now changed quite a bit. And so I think a lot of actors love it. I mean, they they enjoy doing it. And there is a lot of interest uh, about it, especially because now you can't not watch Netflix and not see something that's dubbed. Oh, yeah. You know, some are better than others. And, you know, and I will say this, and we can talk about this more if you want mm-hmm. about the quality of dubbing out there, that, you know, listen, you can have a perfectly a relatively perfectly seamless dubbing experience on a project. But if it's a bad movie, it's a bad movie. If it's a bad TV show, it's a bad TV show. You know, whether the dubbing's good or not. Cause I, right. several people have said, Oh, I've tried watch dubbing, but I just, and I, and I asked them which one, I'm like, well, of course it was a terrible show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mean, wait, what do you, you want? Know, exactly. So, uh, it's, it's definitely uh, sometimes people do find it a challenge to watch to dub material, whether it's good or not. And, and my suggestion always is that when you first start watching a program, a, a show or a film, Try not to focus on the lip flap right away. Try to go a little off center when you're first watching the program. And then if you get interested in it and you start buying the voices for that character, then later on your brain sort of says, okay, I know it's dubbed, but I'm still really enjoying it. So you'll allow yourself to get into it and then you'll forgive the lip flap. Uh, but if you just go into it right away with a sort of judgment against it, you're not going to enjoy it. You're just going to want to turn because you just don't want to, your brain says, oh, it's not lining up. Well, of course mm-hmm. it's not going to line up. It's a different language. You know? Absolutely. So. Yeah. And, and it would be great if we could demonstrate how all this works. But mm-hmm. if somebody gets hired for it, I mean, you audition for it mm-hmm. and or you, you're on a roster mm-hmm. where they try and, you see it, you learn how to do it essentially, mm-hmm. but it helps if you're a good actor. It does. Uh, that's really important. Mm-hmm. Uh, the technology's not too complicated, but mm-hmm. again, it's really hard to learn how to really sync up with it. And because you're, like you said, we're dealing with a couple of different things. There's, there's the platform they're recording on. You're usually on Zoom mm-hmm. with them. Mm-hmm. So it's all got to work just mm-hmm. right. Um, but hopefully people can learn how to do that. Mm-hmm. How does one get into it? That's the million dollar question. Well, that's uh, why I'm asking. <laughs> Let me uh, come up with a few bills here. And then... Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so it helps if you live close to a dubbing facility because it is sort of an easier process uh, being able to be have access to dubbing if you live in the city where dubbing is going on. Right. It's not impossible to book dubbing if you live in other parts of the country. Um, but, you know, my feeling is that if you are truly interested in it, I would go online and start getting the names of the major dubbing houses in New York and LA. And I think there are a few in Dallas and and there in other markets as well, but mainly LA and New York and contact them. You can email them, go on their portals and see if they have a submission portal. If they do submit, um, if not, then you could call them up and I'm sure the receptionist that picks up the phone will have the answer to that question because they probably get that call all the time. Uh, then if you have an agent, uh, let your agent know you're interested in, in dubbing as well. Now I will say there are some agents that don't really care to chase that work because the contract that Netflix negotiated with SAG did not include the 10% commission. And so if you, uh, do pay commission to the agent, it comes out of the talent. And because you're paid relatively low, the agents sometimes feel uncomfortable going after that low amount of money from the actor. So it, it really is just such a, a delicate conversation to have with your agent. But you could at least let your agent know that if auditions come their way, that you're interested in being submitted. Because a lot, some actors are busier in other ways and they just don't want to uh, to chase it. But you can let your agent or manager know. Uh, you can also let your friends know that are also doing dubbing and they can recommend you. I get a lot of submissions through through that I, I've certainly yeah. seen that. So right. there's a lot of referral business yeah. in this. Oh, well, you could be, should yeah. be doing this or yeah. talk to this person or something along those lines. Exactly. Is this one of the companies? I, you know, that's definitely one of them. Yeah. Now I will tell you, here are a couple of little, little secrets. First of all, um, a lot of people say, well, what do I submit? And you know, the commercial demo is probably the better demo because if you have a recently produced commercial demo, you probably have a demo that has a lot of conversational reads. That tells us exactly where your voice naturally sort of lies at this point in time. 
Um, <clears throat> I would not submit an animation or game demo because it's just too too much to spread out. Because in dubbing, in the dubbing world, I'm pretty much hiring you for your voice. I'm not getting uh, sort of crazy voices. I, however, I will say I did a couple of animated series this last year uh, for dubbing, and so I was hiring some wacky voices, certainly. But for the most part, for live action, uh, you're going to be judged and hired based on your natural voice. So if you feel that your commercial demo is sort of, let's say it's a little older and has a lot of character voice work on there, or if you just feel that you don't have enough conversational, then what you can do is just choose a couple of, uh, a couple lines of various attitudes from, you know, a script. Uh, it could be from a play, a movie, whatever, and just read them and record yourself doing them as long as you have a good enough sounding mic, and hopefully you do. And just string those together and submit those because that gives us a nice baseline sort of sound on you. It doesn't have to be fancy. No music, no sound effects, no nothing. It just, we want to hear your voice. Probably That's, the more you, you try to be slick with production, yeah. that will work against you. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Don't Absolutely. Be, don't try to be too clever. Yeah. Just act. Exactly. Just do it yourself. Just record yourself doing it. And, and but just, again, make sure it's a good sounding uh, voice print. And then number two, the one thing that I will say that is attractive uh, from my standpoint is if you are bilingual or trilingual, uh, that does help in the dubbing world uh, because there are times when we have to get various uh, languages from the same person. And so that mm -hmm. would help to show that sort of ability. Uh, you know, fancy accents, we don't really need those as much. It's more about just if you speak fluent languages, uh, other languages fluently. So, mm -hmm. so those are the, th those are my two secrets. Do your own demo and also just let us know that you speak multiple languages fluently. And then I would just say submit to the dubbing houses across the country. And that's, that, that will get you a better chance, I believe, of getting in the door with dubbing than uh, trying to wait for some random audition to come through unless you have an agent that gets a lot of dubbing work and there are a couple of agencies out here that are very open to dubbing and so they do send out auditions that they receive from the dubbing houses and that's how a lot of their talent get on these rosters yeah. and the good news too is that when you get on these rosters and if you're really good the directors all talk to each other and we do our own casting and so and there have been a number of times where I've done casting in the lobby where I'll be talking to another director and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I need such and such. They're like, oh, you've got to try so and so. <laughs> and so I'll go and listen to the demo and I will hire them. I don't even read them. I'll just hire them. So. Uh, so, yeah. So that's to answer your question from five minutes ago. Okay. Well, <laughs> a good referral source is is a very important. Absolutely. Absolutely. When the right person is also casting and directing all the. It's like, no, I got the guy. You absolutely. Don't, you don't go, mm, I don't mm -hmm. know. You go, okay, let's yeah. get to work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Jeff Howell. <laughs> Howell? <laughs> just making you sure. You knew it, but <laughs> yeah, you right. didn't trust yourself. <laughs> no, it's, like, it, it's like the thing with Cliff Zellman and my Aunt Zelda. There was Zelda Feldman oh, and Cliff funny. Zellman. I always confused. That's them. great. It happens when you get over 65, suddenly... Things just don't work quite as well as they do. It used starts to. a lot earlier than that in my <laughs> house. And guess what? <laughs> I hear you. It doesn't get any better. <laughs> We're with Jeff Howell. If you have a question for him, it is your imperative to talk with Jeff uh, Holman, who is in our chat room, and get those questions in now because he knows a lot about a lot of different things. Uh, that go on in professional. And you can put uh, those in LinkedIn, YouTube, or Facebook. We're monitoring all those channels. We're everywhere. Anyway, um, I have noticed because I watch an awful lot of TV because mm. my life is pretty boring. A uh, lot of great stuff. You were talking about mm. some shows that really suck, but I've seen a lot of good stuff coming out of Europe, some great stuff out of Israel mm. and Turkey. They've been studying here, haven't they, how mm. to make good stuff because mm. – I can see the you know how it is that they're that's formatted the way mm -hmm. it is in Hollywood, but they're doing it in their own studios. I know there's a big studio in Morocco where a lot of stuff is getting done, mm -hmm. and uh, and some really good actors. Of course, now I'm starting to notice the same voice for mm -hmm. different characters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, wasn't that the guy that played this and that other show? Yeah, yeah. So there's you there's got a probably good ear, you start picking those. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, of yeah. course, I have a good ear. I <laughs> I listen to voices all day. Yeah. Um. What, where do you think the best stuff is coming from? Well, from my projects now. Yes. Oh, um, well, okay. Well, I, you know, I, 
that's such a boy. That's a question I haven't faced. But I would say that, you know, the the secret is Netflix has studios all across the world, you know, all around. Right. You know, and so they and they have a standard. So that's why you're noticing that the overall quality from all these uh, companies, all these all these companies in all the other countries, it's starting to look better and better and better because Netflix has created the standard. Right. And technical standard as well. You can look that right up on their website. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can learn yeah. all about what they want to hear from you. Exactly. That's so, it. so I think that, um, to be honest with you, I don't even know if 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 there's a certain uh, country or or area of the world where uh, better product is coming out of. I, I think there's just such great material coming out of the United States. To be honest with you, uh, but what happens is is that uh, the process. My understanding. Is that, for example, Netflix will have, uh, they'll invest in shooting a film, let's say in Israel, and then they'll already plan to, we're going to dub it in French, we're going to dub it in Spanish. So they already have those rough tracks, all that being sent to all the different markets at the same time. Like I may be dubbing something uh, from Israel at this time, and Paris is working on it at the same time. Uh, you know, you could have uh, Belgium working on it or Germany, Munich or, or wherever. You could have the different offices all around the world working on the same project at the same time. So, um, and that that's probably the case because, you know, I don't know if you noticed that when you go on and you look at all the different languages, they all come up at the same time. You want to watch it in Spanish, you want to watch it in German, you want to watch it in, you know, whatever. So, right. so they're all, we're all working at it, I would imagine, on the same product at the same time. Right. And it's about 10 minutes of credits afterwards. Well, they go, oh, yeah. Today. The Swedish oh, yeah. guys, yeah. and here's the Japanese oh, yeah. covers. And if you want to know what these studios are, watch the credits. Yeah, exactly. Because they're all Very credited true. at the end, at, at the post roll. So you'll Absolutely. know exactly who they are. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Jeff Howell. You can ask questions. I'm, I'm running out of questions because I know all this stuff. No, I don't. I, <laughs> but you've also, you've also taught uh, promo. I, mm -hmm. I've taken your promo classes, and that's yes. that's very similar type yeah. of work. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of people getting into promo. As I like to say, it's a small cadre of folks who are consistently getting mm -hmm. the big network stuff. What is it that they're doing that is different than say everybody else who's trying what's the secret what's yeah, the secret of promo well that's a, that's definitely a secret well i think the number one secret of getting into promo is being aligned with an agent or manager that is very active in that not all talent agencies have active promo departments they they all do promo but some of them have uh promo departments that have a bit more a uh, uh, weight they have more people maintaining those departments they have their contacts at these networks and and I think that just like because I used to be an agent a long time ago, and I know that we all these have these highly coveted relationships. And, you know, so come to me. Don't go to another agent. Come to me and I'll give you the talent and that sort of thing, which is understandable. Of course, it's a relationship business. So more so than commercial, I think. Commercial is more spread out. But promo is still more relationship based. And so I think that the the true secret is access and access is through a known manager or agent that has uh, those sort of contacts. And then when you go beyond that, certainly the sound of promo has changed. And when I'm speaking about promo, when I'm teaching promo, whether it's at the various conventions around the country uh, or in, in classes here in L.A., uh, you know, I always say that, you know, we're all at the mercy of pop culture and what's going on in terms of the taste of the VO business, whether it is commercial or promo. And and so what was considered more of a standard at one time, which was that more bombastic sort of coming up on CBS, that sort of read right. is not as standard any longer. And so you find a less aggressive read, but it is still engaged. For example, it may not be coming up, but it might be coming up on CBS. It's not as loud and vocalized and stabbed and or staccato or bombastic as we always say, mm. but it's, but it's still invested. And one of the networks said, we just want our promo people to sound like they like the show. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds like a, a sort of a basic, but a lot of these actors, because some of the more active ones that are going from job to job to job, they start dialing it in. No disrespect to them, because that is a sort of that's what happens when you do it all the time. Then it becomes so automatic that sometimes you have to stop and remind yourself, oh, I have to like this show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's then it's sort of going back to the acting a little bit mm, right. and thinking about researching the show you're reading for, whether it's an audition or an actual uh, session. Um, but so the reads right now are a little bit less aggressive. Uh, now there are exceptions to every rule. Uh, you know, I, I will sometimes spend an afternoon 
going through various networks or, or cable nets and listening to the programming and the promos. And sometimes you will find still that style that's a bit more aggressive. Uh, but, you know, it certainly has changed and diversity certainly has had an effect on promo. And, and then also with the, just the variation, the multitudes of different networks and even on a network, they may have different sounds, different day parts. You know, you might have an actor doing this day part. You may have an actor doing just this one show, you know, or you'll have an actor that has a whole evening or they may be just daytime and not evening or, you know, so, so there are sounds very, such variations out there. So the good news is it's not that limiting you know you've got it's not just the deep voiced men that are booking now you've got a lot of women getting into it now more than ever before and again like i mentioned diversity mm-hmm. certainly is is there as well so it's it's uh it's an interesting time but promo is definitely a bit harder to get access to and i think mainly it's just the access of how do i get those opportunities those scripts um, you know, I, this is again, a part of networking. I think a big part of, 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 uh, VO, uh, should be networking. I think promo is one that could really be, uh, attained through networking. And that is by, you know, going to the different conventions and trying to hunt down the people that are there speaking about promo and, and chatting with them and picking their brains. And you never know, uh, what might come from that conversation. Right. And also right. people Just who are in the somebody promo. right now during something like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, we're talking with Jeff Howell. Again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. We're going to take a break right now, and we'll be right back with your questions and more talk about all this stuff right after this. So do not go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. Oh, hi. You know, if you live in a house and your voiceover studio is in that house... You don't want to disturb everybody else who's living in there. So what you need are good headphones that are made specifically for voiceover. And that's why we have Harlan Hogan's Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0. What's so great about these? Well, one, they have a very flat response. So you only hear exactly what it is you sound like. Second, incredibly comfortable. Leather leather pads on the outside filled with memory foam, a really comfortable headband that really it really works with your head. The most important thing, you can wear them for long periods of time. That's really important. Where do you get them? Only at voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Just go there, look at the headphones, and get them now. Tell them we sent you. Thanks, Harlan. Well, it's time to thank our sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and Nexus. The new version of Nexus has been released, which is an ever-evolving platform that allows you to do a lot more things with the Source Elements family of products, mainly being able to have meetings, bring clients in from lots of different locations, and integrate them right into a production much more easily than assembling inputs and outputs from different conferencing apps and all the other mess that goes along with it. So that's what Nexus is. But honestly, voice actors, those of you who are watching the show, which is probably most of you, you're going to want to know what Source Connect is. And the best way to do that is to head over to source-elements.com and go check out the content they have. They have a lot more content on learning Source Connect and getting it set up. I also have a video that's getting real long in the tooth. It's been out almost, what, three and a half years. But if you go on Source, if you go on uh, YouTube and search for Source Connect for voiceover, I also have a good long video on there that will give you an orientation about how to get started with Source Connect. But get yourself set up with an account, get it downloaded, learn how the thing works and understand the workflow. So when those agents come along and say, this job requires Source Connect, you're going to be ready. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thank you so much for sponsoring us, Source Elements. And let's get on to the questions right after this. Well, hey there, it's David H. Lawrence with VO Heroes. And wouldn't it be cool if there was a very simple tool, drag and drop tool, that would guarantee that the audio you need to upload to ACX or any other audiobook platform is perfectly set up in terms of the tech standards, the root mean square normalization, the peak normalization, the noise floor? Guess what? There is, and I want you to have it absolutely free. It's called Audio Cupcake. 
and you can find it at audiocupcake.com. I helped create this software. It was built to my specs and my standards for when I do audiobooks, and I know it's going to work for you. Now, it's only available for Macintosh uh, because you Windows users, you have the ability to use other tools that work for you. But in this case, you edit your final raw WAV file for a chapter, you drop it onto Audio Cupcake, and out comes the 192K mono MP3 file you can upload immediately. That's audiocupcake.com. Audiocupcake.com. I hope you love it. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And we're back. Over the shop. Jeff Howell, we're talking about dubbing, we're talking about promo, and we're, we can talk a little bit about commercials if you want. Uh, sure. Getting a lot of people were like, I want to learn how to do commercials, mm-hmm. and... Mm-hmm. Most people got to realize that most voiceover is not showbiz, mm-hmm. that it is, there's a lot of mundane things that have to be recorded. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of commercials, you know, probably this amount of what's out there. Of course, mm-hmm. that's the stuff that pays the most. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so when you get a job like that, it's really more gravy, but you've got to really get all these other types of work, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the e-learning and the, uh, the, the medical narration and you've been teaching anybody that type of work. Uh, it's interesting you say that. I Someone did come to me recently uh, about medical narration, and I referred them to someone else because I really felt that, you know, even though I've certainly been exposed to that, I there are other experts out there that I prefer sending people to, especially when I'm really, really busy. But I'd say, you know, for example, when people come to me for animation, even though I've directed animation, I've certainly cast it. But, you know, I love sending people to the pros that know all those tricks that take it to another level. And I mean, I, I certainly will coach auditions and animation auditions because it's about the acting and that I can certainly do. But, you know, it's it's I think there are so many people out there that, you know, they and I'm not criticizing other coaches at all because we all have our strengths and weaknesses. I certainly have mine. But, you know, the thing is, I think that there are so many people, there's such specialists in certain fields. I'm very happy to send people to those specialists because you know, when someone comes to me and they want to, you know, get into a certain part of the business, I want to try to give them the best advice and send them to the best person for that, you know, that particular area of VO. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've been certainly exposed to political narration and that's big, of course, and medical and, and legal narration and in-show um, narration, of course, and, you know, all that, you know. Right. I mean, I've worked in the audiobook book area a bit to as well, but I always send people to Scott because why would I want to do it when you have Scott Brick there? Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> you can't you can't do any better than that. I know I mean, he is he is the absolute king of this sort of thing. Absolutely. Once again, if you've got a question for Jeff Howell, throw it in the chat room right now, and we will get to that question. Like the first question we have, Mister Whittem, your turn. Yes, we've got one from Fiber Jazz, who watches us from YouTube. Uh, two of them actually. First, um, do you coach for descriptive narration? For the visually impaired, is that something that that goes into your uh, audio description? Audio description, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, no, I do not, but I do have, I do know a, ver- a couple of people that do that sort of thing, mm-hmm. and then um, that's a, definitely a, a specific area of the business. Um, you know, I did hear that that might be one of the areas that AI may end up uh, stepping into. Uh, more sooner than later, mm. uh, because it doesn't require as much acting nuance as other parts of VO. But don't quote me on that because that is not confirmed. That's just something, yeah. a rumor that I heard out there. But of course, mm-hmm. everyone's concerned about AI in every area of our business, of course. Right, right. Uh, but not to say that you shouldn't try to get into it because who knows? You know, it may be around for quite a while. Yeah. yeah. He has a second question. And I'm not, maybe you'll interpret this better than me. I didn't quite fully understand, but he says for a dubbing, do you need to know the original language or are there other ways to synchronize with the speaker? Does that make sense to it you? It does. It does. Okay. You do not need to understand the original language. However, if you do, boy, does it help. There have been a number of times where we've had, uh, especially in the, in the world of the Spanish, you know, the Latin uh, projects, the Spanish speaking projects. And I've had, uh, you know, oftentimes I'll try to uh, cast people with some sort of uh, background in the Spanish language. And so there have been a couple of times where we received sort of an odd translation and they'll actually chime in and say, oh, you know what they meant? 
And so we'll sometimes readapt on the fly based on the feedback that the actor or actress gave us because of their unique understanding. So you do not need to know the language, the original source language, but it certainly helps. Um, and in terms of syncing it up, that's what the job of the adapter. The actor doesn't have to worry about that as much. Of course, it helps if you have a good sense of rhythm and you spot something and go, oh, you know what? I see an O labial, an O, an o lip formation there, and I think I could put this word there. And we're certainly open to your your uh, input. Uh, but, you know, the adapters, and they're so highly valued. I mean, I, I just... I think adapta an adaptation, a strong adaptation, is essential for a uh, well-produced sort of um, easier sort of production process when you're doing dubbing. And the adapter is the one that takes the translation and they put it through VoiceQ or whatever, DubX or whatever system. And they're the ones that spend hours and hours and ah. days and days lining up everything. So by the time it gets to the studio, it's already gone through. That makes um, sense because QC. We like to we will watch the we will watch a, a dub Netflix mm -hmm. show. And we'll watch the with the subtitles. Yeah. And, and we'll it, notice when they don't line up, we're like, why are they? Mm -hmm. That's exactly that's what it is. They've yeah. adapted it to mm -hmm. make it fit better right. with the what the actor's doing. Absolutely. Else. Okay, makes you, total sense. Try not to watch <laughs> with the subtitles <laughs> because it will your brain will uh, there'll be yet another reason why you'll hate dubbing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well my, my girlfriend is yeah. ESL, so she still does mm -hmm. like to read the mm -hmm. subtitles mm -hmm. to just further grasp what's mm -hmm. being said. But that makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. Now yeah. I get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the answer. All righty. Uh, next one is from Grace Newton. She asks, what are some of the red flags that talent should look for when approached for dubbing work? Oh, that's I and okay. I know exactly what she's talking about. That Sometimes there there are a lot of scams out there. It's like, oh, we mm -hmm. need you to do this and you are going to rent you this. You know, you have to rent the studio and things along those lines. Mm -hmm. and, well, I think that, you know. Clearly, if you're working with a reputable dubbing house, then there really are no red flags. You can choose to take the job or not, and a good dubbing house will will tell you what you're getting into. Because, you know, oftentimes you, you may have a, a sensitivity for a certain type of material or against a certain type of material. And so they, especially if there's nudity involved or language, you know, raw language involved, they will certainly uh, tell you that. A reputable shop, when they're casting they'll and they're calling the talent, they let them know that. Um, the pay is what it is uh, in terms of union and non-union. It can be a little iffy, but most of the production houses here in LA are union. And so that's not even an issue really. Does GVAA or any of those organizations have a, a rate card? So you have an, so like if you get yeah. something that comes to you mm -hmm. and says, here's the rate, mm -hmm. you can verify that they're. Yeah. You know, that's a good question. And I'm with GVA and I have no idea. <laughs> I, haven't looked, I haven't looked at the rate card to see if they have a dubbing. I'm sure they probably do by this point, yeah, right. I imagine. Um, mm -hmm. And those are, they're great folks, by the way. And, and I'm sure they have it. Um, but if not, I mean, I think that it's, I think, I'm tr again, I'm, I'm really trying to come up with an answer to that question. I can't think of any real red flags. I mean, just follow your gut instinct. If you're, if it's some sort of, um, you know, production facility in the middle of the country or, or even on in LA or New York that you've never heard of. And you can certainly use, let Google be your friend. And yeah, if you and, can't find yeah, anything about right. them and nobody, you know, knows anything about them. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ask around, ask around. And if, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Mm. And, and, and obviously it goes without saying if any facility asks you to pay them, then obviously that's, <laughs> that would be a huge red flag for yeah. me. You know, they're supposed to be paying you. But that being said, you know, uh, trying to get paid from these facilities, that might be the issue as well if you're using one that isn't reputable. So definitely try to check them out. And that's that's all I can really think of to answer that mm -hmm. question. Yeah. yeah. And now Jeff Holman gets to ask his own question. Would Good. you like me to do it to camera or the camera is looking right at you? Yeah, look at the little. Would you like me to do it to little, camera? Or yes, you will. A little, little, okay. a little bit of acting the here. Chicken head. Right. <laughs> so, Jeff, you mentioned a couple of times that the pay is not that great for dubbing. What kind of pay are we talking about? Well, the union has negotiated with Netflix, and they have now. They raised it to a three-hour minimum, and and then after that, you get paid per half. I think it's per half hour after that, and I think I should have probably looked this up because I don't I don't <laughs> write the contracts. So, I think it's around the three hundred range. For the three hour, and then you get then you get um, a, a buyout, a fifty percent buyout for the residuals, 
and on top of that, and then you get a percentage on top of that to cover any overages if you go over the three hour period. So I think it averages, I don't know, you probably have an actor that would probably call in and say otherwise, but I think you end up for one session, maybe averaging around what, four or 500 bucks, maybe, I don't know, mm -hmm. but that's for a three so hour like minimum. A, that sounds like a fair pay. Mm -hmm. So All right. Thanks. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Solid. Disney. Maybe a little lower now that I'm saying that. But anyway, Oops. but it's around there. Around there. <laughs> Don't it's between quote three. Him. It's about between three and five. <laughs> you know, I really should have looked that up and I didn't. <laughs> Quick Google that. Thanks for asking me a question I didn't have the answer to. So, yeah. <laughs> Once again, if you've got a question for Jeff, you still have lots of time to throw that in there so we can ask him that. You know, we were talking a few minutes ago about, uh, you know, translation and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I've been doing a bunch of stuff for a Turkish agency. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this doesn't make any sense in English. Where, where are you getting? Clearly, they're using bad Google Translate yeah. to get this stuff. And again, you were saying that suggest this is what you have to do. You know, add a contraction in there because people don't talk yeah, like this. I was going to say, well, how, how are you handling that with them? Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. Well, it's when like, that happens. I, I go, I'm changing this mm -hmm. <laughs> because they trust me. They know that I'm yeah, going to do it right. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A uh, question from Max Goldberg says, uh, are some promo houses willing to take on talent for scratch reads? Yes. Uh, I know that when I worked at a promo company for about 17 years, uh, certainly I utilized scratch and I'll tell you, it started a number of careers because they got really good at it. And my deal with the talent that scratch for me is I would give them an MP3 of the finished spot so they could use that for a reel. I'm going to make you define what that means by, by the okay. way, okay. scratching. Okay. Yeah. Cause really we always, we love throwing out jargon. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Scratch <laughs> is just basically a rough version of the spot. Cause you know, a lot of times when we write these, these spots, we don't know if they're going to work or not. So we'll have a scratch voice, meaning a, a temp voice go in there and actually read it. And usually it's directed. And, and uh, once we're happy with the read, we'll send that uh, to the network for approval. And, you know, uh, I'd say at least 25% of the time, 30% of the time, the network would say, we like that voice. And so we would just, you know, if we didn't have to change it, I would just hmm. call that actor and say, who's your agent? Or I'd know their agent. And I'd say, we're sending you, you know, we're filling out a contract for you and, and call it a day. They were thrilled. It was, and I loved it when that happened too, because those were people that were usually students of mine, uh, or, or they were people that were referred to me. Um, people whom I met networking out there, and I try mm -hmm. to keep a list of people who are interested in scratching. So to answer your question, yes, I think that uh, most production facilities are certainly would be up for it because you're basically volunteering to be uh, a scratch voice. Now, getting access to that is a little harder because you don't have as many outsourced production companies anymore that are producing promos. A lot of them are directly in-house because the technology is a lot cheaper now for, for the networks to be able to do it in-house. Certainly is cheaper for them not to outsource it. And so it's getting into those networks. And that's a little bit of a harder sort of uh, get. Uh, but there are some uh, production companies. Again, that's a good Google search for you uh, to see if you can find some of the production houses in L.A. or New York uh, that would be able to, you know, would be interested. And the same for trailer companies as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the trailer business it's not quite as uh, busy as it used to be uh, because we're not hearing a lot of voices on trailers, but there's still trailer houses that will need test voices because they'll, they'll write uh, big packages and send them to the networks. And then the networks can sit there and sit on those packages for months and months trying to decide which way to go. And ultimately they may hire their go-to trailer person. And we know that group of 10 or 12 <laughs> that are out there doing it, but you never know when you might hit Hit, hit it and they're going to say we want a new voice and that that person sounds great so you never know yeah and and again getting access to the studio mm -hmm. is the end for a lot mm -hmm. of people how many times have we heard the story well i was doing a scratch track or i was doing something yeah. for this mm -hmm. and somebody walks in and says by the way are you available to yeah. do this absolutely and a lot of careers i think almost every career i've ever mm -hmm. you know I've, I've heard of the people we've had on the show oh yeah it was by mistake, you know, or it was mm. they were looking for somebody and somebody couldn't show up. Like, well, you try it, mm. like Don LaFontaine. That's yeah. how he started. It's uh -huh. fascinating. It's true. Yeah. Uh, that's the last one in the queue. It is. So, Jeff, tell us a little bit about you know how you're teaching, where you're teaching, and where can people access you. 
So I, I don't usually have my own group class here in Los Angeles because, you know, my main priority, my main job, uh, is to produce and direct. So I'm usually busy with that. However, I'm very happy to be a guest speaker and appear in various classes in LA and New York. So I'm, I'm approached about those classes periodically and I do those, I make those appearances. Um, also, I go to the several conventions. Sometimes I'll take a year off from this one or a year off from that one uh, just to re-energize and, and charge up my batteries and, and all that. But I do do private coaching, mostly by Zoom, as most everyone, although I do have an office at LA Studios. And so now that things are a lot more open and I do have a, a, a booth there in my office, so uh, I'm certainly able to do in-person uh, if the person is in LA and wants to come in. And I certainly enjoy that process, too. For people who want to reach me, I do have my own website. It's uh, jeffhowellvo.com, and or you can email me at jeff at jeffhowellvo.com. And, and I will say this, and I say this continually, that please don't get frustrated if I don't get back with you right away. Feel free to email me on a regular basis. People have booked when they've done that, to be honest with you, <laughs> because I just, when I'm in a studio, a dark studio for hours and hours and hours, I just don't even have a minute to even check my emails. And so by the end of the day, when I go to check my emails, it's usually putting out fires, production fires first. So sometimes the emails start shifting down into mm. the box. And I actually <laughs> had an actress who was a lovely person and, and has become a dear friend. At one point she said, I think you need an assistant. And, <laughs> and I said, you know what? You're right. Yeah. But um, anyway, but I, I love private coaching. I do it as much as often as I can. Uh, I love that process. I love uh, coaching people in whatever you know area of voiceover that I feel uh, strongest that I can share that information with you. But also my goal is to teach you or to meet with you as little as possible because I give you a lot of homework and because I really feel like it's a, a joint process. I, I don't try to – because my, my work process is not to train actors every day. I'm coaching. I'm directing sessions every day. So my goal is to, again, check in with you. Um, of course, if an actor is really feeling like they need to see me more often, I'm certainly there for them. But my goal is to try to get you independent of me so that you can train yourself. So it trains your own ear and and then for me to fine tune you so that because, again, the real world, you, unless you really can afford to have a director directing all your auditions for you, you're having to direct yourself. And so my my feeling is that if I can give you uh, skills uh, to take and to work on with on your own to be able to direct yourself and hear yourself. And I think that's the most important thing. And that's my sort of contribution to your career. And, yeah. you know, I feel like when you can do that, I've done a good job. <laughs> well, you are a very busy guy and we really appreciate you coming on today. My pleasure. And, my and pleasure. Letting us my pleasure. get all this wisdom in here. Yes, of Jeff. course. It's always uh, a pleasure. Always Paul. a pleasure. All right. Jeff Howell. I remembered that time. <laughs> we'll be right back right after these messages. So don't go away. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Seed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Hey, it's time to talk about one of our other great sponsors, voiceactor.com. Voiceactor.com. What is voiceactor.com? Look, as a voice actor, you have to have a website. It's important. It is the most, aside from just being talented and, and, you know, and making sure that your demos are really good, you got to have a website to show people that you are there, that you have a footprint, an internet footprint. 
And it's not easy to do, especially if you've ever tried to design a website. Very difficult. You hire somebody to do it. You're talking four to five, maybe six months of going back and forth and trying to get it right. Over at voiceactor.com, voiceactor.com, they've got templated websites. Super duper easy. You sign in, you create an account for free. You can start. And there are templates that you can look at. Oh, I like this one. Oh, I can put my picture there. And they are totally customizable with color, with where you put your pictures, all these sorts of things. And you can get your website up and running in half an hour, not five to six months. If you're trying to get your, your site up and running, that's the way to do it. And then they have a, a special offer for $20 a month. You will get your own URL and it is just fantastic. Then you've got your website and that's the most important thing. Go over to voiceactor.com. That's voiceactor.com and get your voice actor website up and running right now. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as, as Wovo. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. Wovo is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with the, the chance, chance to learn, learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. living. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Hey, we're back. There's a big empty chair here. All right, we'll fix that. Uh, we got to set it up for Tech Talk after this, and we've got some great stuff to talk about there. But our thanks again to Jeff Howell for coming in and talking to us about all the stuff that he does, which is an immense amount of stuff, and he is certainly one of the most knowledgeable people here in the business yeah. here in LA. You can tell he's an authority on the subject. Yeah. Uh, next week on this very show, it will be Tech Talk number 114. <laughs> Believe yeah. it or not. And, uh, and the last one of the year, right? It will be the last Tech Talk of the year because we're going to take mm. a little time off, retool. Mm. You know, December's a weird month for me. Well, right now, because my anniversary is the day or after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. My wife's birthday is December 5th. You got Hanukkah sticking in there and Christmas mm -hmm. and all that stuff. When does it fall this year? Where it always does, on the 25th of Kislev. Of it's, course. Oh, it's the same time the same. every year. Why ask the question? I know. You ask that question every year. And then my birthday at the end of the year. It's like, we got too much crap going on in November and December. And we're trying to make some material changes to the way we produce the show. So. Just, just a little. Just, just we're going to take a, take a little break. Yeah, we need a break. I mean, heck, we... We've been doing this show for 12 years. You'd think we'd be running out of things to talk about, but not. Uh, we need to thank the people, of course, uh, who uh, who donate to the show, like uh, Greg Cooper. Grace Newton. Christopher Epperson. Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Thomas Pinto. Greg Thomas. Hey, Dr. Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, Maria Mackis, and Sandra Manwiller. Thank hey. you all for all your contributions and making this show technically amazing, especially if you're watching live, you see how amazing it actually is. <laughs> uh, you got any specials running? Well, we just have our usual georgethe.tech slash VOBS landing page. So we always have a discount code for you there. Um, but in terms of other content, we do have some webinars in the hopper right now. We're going to do a little beginner podcast webinar. Wow, it's just sort good of idea. An absolute crash course for like everybody. Stand in thinking. front of microphone, talk. It's <laughs> yeah, it's more about the gear, of course, but we have that coming up uh, at the end of the month. If you want to know what the webinars coming are, just go to georgethe.tech slash 
webinars. All righty. We need to thank our sponsors, of course, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Uh, Source elements there are those guys voheroes.com uh, voiceactor.com and worldvoices.org world-voices.org the Dashing industry association the way. of, of <laughs> freelance voice talent and uh, we're about to make some really cool changes there and uh, people say what are you guys doing we're doing what we always do only we're going to make it better so join up over at world-voices.org uh, let's, we need to thank Jeff Holman, who's actually in the studio tonight. Get the shot of Jeff. In the flesh. Yeah, there he goes. Okay, so wave hello, Jeff. There you go. And now back over here, and, uh, we need to thank Sue Merlino, who's in a lot of pain, oh, but she's yeah. still directing from her place in Burbank and yeah. getting it done remotely. It's, it's amazing. Awesome. We make, yeah. we, we made it happen during the pandemic and it still works when we're all here in the studio as well, but she had to stay home and thanks yeah. for doing that. So feel better. Thanks Sue. All righty. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Stay tuned for tech talk. If you're watching live, stay where you are and ask your questions about your home voiceover studio. Cause George and I just love talking about that stuff. Even if we don't have something to talk about, we find something to talk about. <laughs> and it has to do with home voiceover studios, which is a really important part of your, uh, your business. But I got to tell you, it's not an easy business. And getting your audio right is not easy. But you talk to us, we'll get it right. Because if it sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. See you next week, kids. Later.